Welcome to the Roller Coaster Project. This video is the next installment of the desktop wooden roller coaster. Since the last video, which you can check out right up here, I've streamlined the process a bit by using consistent sheet sizes of birch plywood. My plan was to drill some through holes that would align with my CNC's wasteboard threaded inserts. The only problem is that I'm not as accurate as the machine, so a few holes didn't line up. And that's when I knew Jimmy was gonna whack Maury. You should probably subscribe and like this video too. Putting my shine box away and using quarter inch pan head screws to secure my plywood, can you see the problem on the horizon? Like I said, the holes didn't line up exactly, so I used some wood screws to correct this mistake. The first mistake. With the machine zeroed and the correct tool installed, it's time to cut the next few sections. I'm using what's called a down cut end mill to reduce any uplifting force as I machine the thin wood material. I'm also using holding tabs for the workpieces instead of my previous method. You can check this out in part one to learn more about my previous headache. Since I'm using holding tabs and no double-sided tape under the plywood, I had a few pieces programmed without any way to hold them. Going forward, I'll fix this error. Some of the loose pieces would become lodged under the plywood, so I had to pause the CNC, remove the pieces before continuing. Elon Musk can't land his rocket without exploding, so I think we can let this one slide. You'll notice I get ridiculously close to the screws holding the plywood to the router. I completely forgot to check the clearance as the router moves from position to position, so I was expecting to slam the cutting tool into the stainless steel screws, which would break the tool. Much to my surprise, I didn't crash the router. Once the supports were cut, I removed the plywood from the CNC and started with my oscillating tool to cut the holding tabs. This took a while, but didn't require too much sanding to clean up the edges. However, to speed things up, I used a sharp chisel to clip the tabs more accurately, even checking the final dimension. This was much faster. Using tabs meant less cleanup than the previous holding method from part one, and really helped ensure that the support legs were the correct size of 4.75 millimeter in width. Now that the ride structure is almost complete, I'll soon be adding the track pieces. For this coaster, I decided to not add any since my standard cars can't rotate efficiently. Simply put, a center for rotation is applied from the ride center line and the coaster rotates around it as if it were in a tube. As the banking gets more extreme, the supports have to change to account for stability. The angle for banking is based on lateral acceleration in red, vertical acceleration in green. From these we get our normal accelerations in blue. Track angle is also a factor, but that's for a future video. Thank you for following along, be sure to subscribe and like this video, and I'll have another update for you guys soon.